Hello first graders, day three here of our fairy tale project. So on day one we worked on settings, yesterday we worked on characters, so hopefully now you know where your story is going to take place and you know who's going to be in your story. Today we're going to work on something called conflict, which we've talked briefly about before. A conflict in the story is whatever's going wrong. So like in Snowdrop, the conflict was that the evil queen wanted to kill Snow White so that she could be the prettiest. The conflict in the fisherman and his wife was that the wife was never satisfied with anything that the flounder gave her. So a conflict is something that goes wrong in the story and then usually hopefully gets fixed by the end. So today we're going to read another one of my favorites. It's a very interesting conflict in this story. It's called Rumpelstiltskin, which is a very strange name. Rumpelstiltskin. There was once a miller who was very poor, but he had a beautiful daughter. Now it fell out that he had occasion to speak with the king, and in order to give him an air of importance, he said, I have a daughter who can spin gold out of straw. The king said to the miller, That is an art in which I am very interested. If your daughter is as skillful as you say, bring her to my castle tomorrow, and I will put her to the test. Accordingly, when the girl was brought to the castle, the king conducted her to a chamber, which was quite full of straw, gave her a spinning wheel and winder, and said, Now set to work, and if between tonight and tomorrow at dawn you have not spun this straw into gold, you will die. Thereupon he carefully locked the door of the chamber, and she remained alone. There sat the unfortunate miller's daughter, and for the rest of, and for the life of her did not know what to do. She had not the least idea how to spin straw into gold, and she became more and more distressed, until at last she began to cry. Then all at once the door sprang open and in stepped a little man who said, Good evening, Mistress Miller. What are you crying for? Alas, answered the maiden, I've got to spin gold out of straw and I don't know how to do it. Then the man said, What will you give me if I spin it for you? My necklace, said the maid. The little man took the necklace, sat down before the spinning wheel and whirr, whirr, whirr. In a trance, the reel was full. This is weird little guy. Luckily, he knows how to spin straw into gold because she did not. She would have been in trouble. Um, then he fixed another reel and whirr, 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 thrice round, and that too was full. And so it went on until morning when all the straw was spun and all the reels were full of gold. Immediately at sunrise, the king came, and when he saw the gold, he was astonished and much pleased, but his mind only became more greedy. So he had the mill miller's daughter taken to another chamber larger than the first one and full of straw, and he ordered her to spin it also in one night if she valued her life. The maiden was at her wit's end and began to cry. Then again the door sprang open and the little man appeared and said, What will you give me if I spin my straw into gold for you? The ring off my finger, answered the maiden. The little man took the ring, began to whir again at the wheel, and by morning spun all the straw into gold. The king was delighted at the sight of the masses of gold, but was not even yet satisfied. So he had the miller's daughter taken to a still larger chamber full of straw and said, This must you tonight spin into gold, but if you succeed, you shall become my queen. Even if she is only a miller's daughter, he thought, I shan't find a richer woman in the whole world. When the girl was alone, the little man came again and said for the third time, What will you give me if I spin the straw for gold this time? I have nothing more that I can give, answered the girl. Well, promise me your first child if you become queen. Who knows what may happen, thought the miller's daughter, but she did not see any other way of getting out of the difficulty. So she promised the little man what he demanded, and in return he spun the straw into gold once more. This does not seem like a deal she should be making, does it? She says, if you spin the straw into gold, I'll give you my first baby. Oh, man. When the king came in the morning and found everything as he had wished, he celebrated his marriage with her, and the miller's daughter became queen. About a year afterwards, a beautiful child was born, but the queen had forgotten all about the little man. However, he suddenly entered her chamber and said, Now give me what you promised. The queen was terrified and offered the little man all the wealth of the kingdom if he would let her keep the child. But the man said, No, I would rather have some living thing than all the treasures of the world. Then the queen began to cry in such an extent that the little man felt sorry for her. I will give you three days, he said, and if within that time you discover my name, you shall keep the child. Then, during the night, the queen called to mind all the names that she had ever heard and sent a messenger all over the country to inquire far and wide what other names there were. When the little man came the next day, she began with Caspar, Balthazar, and mentioned all the names which she knew, one after the other. But at every one, the little man said, no, that's not my name. Do you know what his name is? Maybe. The second day she had inquiries made all around the neighborhood for the names of people living there and suggested to the little man all the most unusual and strange names. Perhaps your name is Cowribs, Spindlehanks, or Spiderlegs. 
But he answered every time, no, that's not my name. On the third day, the messenger came back and said, I haven't been able to find any new names, but as I came around the corner of a wood on a lofty mountain where the fox says goodnight to the hare, I saw a little house, and in front of the house, a fire was burning, and around the fire, an indescribably ridiculous little man was leaping and hopping on one leg and saying, today I bake, tomorrow I brew. The next day, I will bring the queen's child here. Ah, lucky tis that not a soul doth know that Rumpelstiltskin is my name. Ho, ho. Did you guess it was Rumpelstiltskin? Maybe if you remembered the title of this story. Then you can imagine how delighted the queen was when she heard the name. And she, when presently afterwards, the little man came in and asked, Now, your majesty, what is my name? At first she asked, Is your name Tom? No. Is your name Richard? No. Is it by chance Rumpelstiltskin? The devil told you that, the devil told you that, shrieked the little man. And in his rage, he stamped his right foot into the ground so hard that he sank up to his waist and was stuck there forevermore. He got so mad, he stomped his foot and he went right through the ground and got stuck there. Oh man, it's a very interesting conflict. For a couple conflicts. First, she's got to figure out how to spin straw into gold. And then she's got to figure out how to not get her baby taken away. Oh my goodness. So write today on a new page in your um, writing notebook what you would like the conflict of your story to be. What do you want to go wrong in your fairy tale? You can think about the three that we've read so far this week or any of the other tales that you've heard so far in your life. Maybe you've read them before or maybe you've seen a lot of Disney movies and then you know a lot of fairy tales. So think about what sort of problem you would like to have in your fairy tale and write about that. Tomorrow, we're gonna start actually writing the fairy tales. I'm very excited. I'll see you then. Bye.